to me. So what happens when you get bored with what you're working on and you want to be someone else, dress differently, look differently, become a supermodel, top-rated actor, but it's not possible to do it now? What do you do then? Well, it's easy. You create a second life. Second Life is the latest online offering by Linden Labs with over 8 million registered users. It is a brave new world where you design your own avatar, make new friends, play, learn, and do business. In a nutshell, this would be your second life. We want to build a connected virtual world that everybody can use to learn, to play, to create businesses, and to do all of that together, which is the big difference from the web, right? The web is the sequential medium, right? You post on a blog, then I post on a blog, right? We're not doing things together. We're not having a dialogue. We're not having a conversation. We're having a monologue. And so the big difference with Second Life is all of this is happening in a shared space. It's a shared experience. When we consume media in Second Life, when we consume experiences in Second Life, we're doing it together, which is, of course, which, of course what we want to do because we're a social species. It is this hunger for social interaction that brought people from all around the world into Second Life, into an online digital world that is imagined, created, and owned by its residents. I used to log into Second Life pretty often when uh, I found different interesting friends in there. Um, and I would meet them and we would uh, go to virtual clubs in there. and go dancing and whatnot because you can't do that in Second Life and uh, sometimes you just share your life troubles or whatever while you're in there so it's therapeutic in that sense. A warning this is not a game the creators of Second Life will tell you this is reality. There's a scary thought though considering how close to reality the whole experience really is. Think about it there are people to me in fact a fully functioning economy where you can buy and sell things from this Second Life create opportunities promote yourself or your business whether in your first life or your second life second life very clearly isn't a game uh, if you look at video games video games like anything else have signal characteristics they have artificial conflict they have a set of fixed outcomes and second life doesn't have any of those things just like our first life or some of us might call it our reality you can do business here in Second Life. The Linden dollar is a currency used in this world, and interestingly enough, it is pegged against the American greenback. So last year, Anchi Chung became one of the first few uh, Second Life residents to hit one million US dollars in terms of uh, what she owns. Um, and so that sparked a, a, a gold rush or land rush. What people have been doing is uh, They've set up businesses where they buy land, and so it becomes a very legitimate business that mirrors the real world, in fact. So, um, and just like the real world, because of this, land prices have gone up. So it's, it's quite hilarious, but it, it mirrors uh, the real world very accurately. Perhaps what Second Life really offers is the freedom to dream and to live out your dream. When we look at people, say, building businesses within Second Life, there's a lot of freedom because, let's say, you want to try to be a clothing designer. In the real world, you don't have a lot of freedom to do that because you need production capability, you need a lot of startup capital to try to do it, you need distribution. These are all large impediments to building that kind of, of, of business in the real world. In Second Life, you could go do it today. Besides businesses, educational institutes have accounts in Second Life, too. Nanyang Polytechnic in Singapore is one such example. Over at the School of Interactive and Design Media, students enter Second Life for their classes. NYP decided to be on Second Life first because this is a technology program. It's digital entertainment technology and innovation is our business pretty much so we have to be familiar with new mediums and new technology conventional teaching methods are shelved in this new medium the whole idea is to engage the students and allow them to enjoy themselves while learning 
I always try not to replicate real life. Um, if I replicate the typical setting of me standing and the students separated from me, that doesn't work. This is a new medium. So the actual setting is usually a very, a very more, if I may say, familiar environment. I stand there and I have my slides in, inside the, the world and I have the students around me. And so the way that I do it is more of a discussion. So I bring a topic and say, let's talk about this. Let me show you now. Let's go to this place in Second Life where you can actually see an example of this. And then we have a discussion and I clarify the concepts and all. That's the way the lecture uh, works. Okay, holding a class in Second Life might sometimes be more engaging, but then you really can't replace the real classroom experience. Some people might think that, oh, we could set up a virtual classroom in there, have students meet up online, they don't have to come to class. But the problem with that is that it's very easy to lose interest and isn't ideal for doing that. Face to face is still more engaging. So what we've found is that the better way to teach in Second Life is to set up simulations. So for instance, if you're teaching physics, you can actually show uh, planetary systems, how things orbit and, and move around, and you could have the student, you know, uh, make some changes to the way it works and then see how the resultant outcome is. And they can learn from all these kind of simulations. There was a skepticism from people, from students, even from staff and lecturers about Second Life. But is this a game? Is it not? Uh, but once we did it and once we saw the results, like, you know, students were learning. Our students were actually hired by Linden Lab. Uh, Singapore. Once we, uh, the whole management and all the lecturers saw that there are actually real values in education, everybody jumped in it. And we had actually a really nice support from the school, setting up the lab and all. Since the students found the lesson so enjoyable in the virtual world, I decided to try and see for myself. So everyone, say hi to IT Tim Peckable. Why are people drawn into Second Life? Um, off the top of my head, I see two compelling reasons. Uh, first of all, it would be one of the most accessible means for somebody to actually go into a space and actually have a physical body, uh, sort of like a, a, an embodiment of themselves online. The other one is the idea that for, I think, one of the most uh, compelling reasons why Second Life is so interesting is also because of the non-verbal communication. So when I refer to non-verbal communication, I think I refer to things like gesture, gesturing and all that. And so, for, for example, um, let's say you were to instant message a friend and say, get well soon, you could put a smiley. So that's an attempt, an emoticon is an attempt at which you convey a non-verbal. Uh, in a sense of Second Life, you can actually say that Plus, you can go forward to the person and hug the person. Well, in the ideal world, I would love to say that I've mastered the art of moving around or to use my character to communicate with someone else non-verbally, possibly through a hug. But wait a minute. In the real, real world, I can't even get past changing my avatar. The controls and my movements sure take a while to get used to. And with a large amount of bandwidth that the program needs to transfer all that 3D information, it is tough to fully appreciate the whole experience. First life or second life? I think I'll deal with this life first, so when we return, we'll have a look at all the latest gadgets to help us communicate better, virtually. We'll be right back. Talk to me.